Yes, Chairperson. Yes, Honorable Professor. I must move for the second manager. So the agenda is adopted. Uh, let me just uh, make uh, just few remarks. Uh, first, to welcome members from the, the long uh, constituency period. And I hope they are beginning to be ready for this. It's going to be a short term between now and the 23rd of uh, September. But I think we need to do more. Uh, in the agenda itself, we're talking about uh, lawmaking, which I think we have been saying we are not so uh, fast in terms of dealing with this. But we just got a bonus uh, where the president signed the last piece of legislation that we passed in parliament. Uh, but my challenge on this would be to say, as people who are finally or primarily are responsible for making laws, we should champion what one would call public education about these laws. Because generally the feedback that we are getting from our constituency, it looks like the laws that we make are for us. <laughs> they are not for them. And they would even deny that they have been consulted. So I, I would suggest that let's find a way to educate the public about the laws and possible impact these laws can have in changing what we are supposed to see. Uh, governance, good governance at that local level, delivery of services, uh, minimizing. Well, somebody fought with me when I said we want to minimize the death of uh, initiates. Uh, so the issue of uh, bad governance, the laws that we pass are meant to deal with that. But let's educate the public. Let's not leave it to analysts only to talk about uh, these laws that we have passed. So let's hear members and uh, so that we can make people understand that there are laws and ultimately in the final analysis, they are the beneficiaries of such laws. So one of the items here would be talking about uh, the law. And I think we need to emphasize uh, this issue. I just thought I should make those remarks and also indicate that uh, whilst we may not have enough time to do oversight as members of parliament, but as we interact with communities in our various uh, areas uh, of work, we should also be able to make sure that we, 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 we help communities raise questions and we must help communities get responses when they raise such uh, questions. So in a way, we must find a way to coordinate such responses, such that people might, through their public representatives, be able to interact with government. I thought I should raise those uh, issues. Yeah. And, uh, we lost you in between. You we are not me. hearing what you are saying. Yes, we lost you. But uh, what I said is not long. I'm saying as lawmakers, we must help communities to understand the contents of the law. Let's not leave that to analysts only. So in other words, we want to hear members of parliament talking to for instance, the recent law that has been signed by the president, because I think that piece of legislation would have a good impact in local government. So I was just emphasizing that it's just a principle to say communities at times, they say we make laws for ourselves. 
uh, maybe it's because they uh, we are not doing enough in terms of public education. So those were just a few comments I wanted to make and uh, immediately move to item uh, number one in terms of the agenda. Allow the deputy minister to introduce uh, the item and uh, direct it as he, he would know who must come in to do it. Over to you, Honorable Appella. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson, and greetings to you and all honorable members. Something that is. I don't, I don't know now who is making that noise. Okay. Should I continue? Uh, continue, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I was saying greetings to you and all honorable members of the portfolio committee and also uh, to the DG, the PAFA, who is leading the team here, also joined by DG uh, Avril Williamson, who is also part of the meeting, and other officials uh, from the department and your officials from government. Uh, honorable members, we thank you very much for inviting us uh, and giving us this opportunity uh, as Department of Traditional Affairs. We are here, obviously, to present on some technical amendments to our legislation that requires attention and <clears throat> introduce uh, this through what we call the Traditional Affairs General Amendment Bill. Uh, as members will be aware that the Traditional and Coercion uh, Leadership Act number no. 3 of 2019 came into operation on the 1st of April 2021. At the end, that at the time of the finalization of the Act, government was also busy with the Municipal Structures Act a bill at the time. The bill has since also been finalized into Act. However, there are certain references in these pieces of legislation that needs to be amended and be aligned in order to ensure legal certainty. These are more technical amendments and do not affect the substance of these pieces of legislation. Therefore, the presentation will then be able to explain what are the technical amendments and what is it that we are proposing going forward. DJ Dipofa has a team, and I understand Dr. Bester will be the one presented, but let me give to DJ Dipofa then to, to introduce the team. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, DJ. Uh, DG, where are you now? Uh, my, my apologies, uh, uh, okay. Honorable uh, um, My, I hope I'm audible. Uh, my microphone was uh, uh, not corporate yes. on this side. Thank you, thank yeah, you very fine. much. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chairperson, uh, our Deputy Minister, Honourable Babela, all the Honourable Members of the uh, of the committee. Um, um, good morning, and indeed, as the Honourable Deputy Minister has indicated, um, the presentation will be led by our Chief Director responsible for legislative drafting, uh, Dr. Rinaldi Bester, through you, Chairperson, if I could... Uh, hand over to, to Dr. Besser uh, to, to do the presentation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Honorable, um, Honorable Mabika Chair. Is Mabika. Uh, yeah. Honorable Mabika. I was open here so that I can see who is making noise. Uh, uh, 
Uh, <coughs> Honorable Mr. Basta, you can continue. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. Um, can I just ask whether Shireen will put the presentation on screen or can I do it? Uh, whatever, that is easy to do. Okay, In let fact, me share I think that. they can hear you. If there's anybody who can assist, that would be good. Thank you. We can see it. Okay, I hope it's going to move up and down also. Um, yeah, this presentation is on Zoom sometimes. Okay, I'm I'm going to, to, to try and uh, do this. It looks like when I put it on side mode, Honorable Chairperson, it doesn't want to move up and down with the pages. Um, it's a very short presentation, Honorable Chair and Members. Uh, as Deputy Minister was saying, the, the purpose of this uh, is really just to, of the presentation is to um, uh, point out to the Honorable Members the reasons for uh, technical amendments that are to be affected to Section 81 of the Structures Act and then also Section 16 of the Traditional Course and Leadership Act, uh, better known as the TKLA, and then also the reason for the proposed repeal of Section 30 of the Local Government Municipal Structures Act. So, um, Honourable Members, Section 81 of the Structures Act deals with the participation of traditional leaders in municipal council proceedings. Um, through the traditional course and leadership act that Deputy Minister Papella was referring to, a new section 81 was introduced. And that section 81 also commenced on 1 April 2021, the date on which the TKLA commenced. Now, in terms of section 81, uh, Honorable Chair, I'm hearing other, I'm not sure whether I should stop or continue. No. Uh, Chair, if I may, I will propose uh, that members really take the meeting seriously and switch off. This is legislation we're dealing with, there are details here. And uh, if we're getting these, uh, these disturbances, really they, 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 they disturb our thought process. Chair, please, 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 please. Thank you, Honourable Chair and Members. So, uh, in terms of Section 81, that is now the new one, but also the old one uh, that has been replaced. The Code of Conduct um, that was contained in the Systems Act also applied to traditional leaders who participate in, in the Municipal Council proceedings. And therefore, this Section 81 has a couple of references to the Code of on Conduct as it appears in the Systems Act. But the members of the Portfolio Committee will remember that in, um, uh, I think it was since 2018, they were dealing with the Municipal Structures Amendment Act, or bill at the time, which became law in 2021. And in terms of that Structures Amendment Act of 2021, that code of conduct was actually removed from the Systems Act and placed into the Structures Act as Schedule 7 to the Structures Act. So as a result of this, the references to the code of conduct as it appears in the new Section 81 that came into operation through the TKLA, are outdated because they still refer to the Code of Conduct as it appeared in the Systems Act. And uh, those technical amendments are therefore uh, brought through Clause 1 of the Bill to make sure that we refer to the correct Code of Conduct as it now appears in the, um, in the uh, uh, Structures Act. Then, um, in uh, Section 30 of the Municipal Structures Amendment Act of 2021, contained um, an amendment to Section 81 of the Structures Act. However, that particular amendment that was in the, uh, the 2020, or is in the 2021 Act, refers to the Section 81 before it was amended by the Traditional Coins and Leadership Act. In other words, it refers to, or it tries to amend text that does not exist anymore. And honorable members may have noticed that when the president signed the commencement proclamations of the Structures Amendment Act of 2021, Section 30 was particularly excluded from commencement because if it was to commence, it was going to try and amend something that doesn't exist anymore. So um, although uh, it was excluded from the commencement proclamations, honorable chair members, 
it will remain on the statute if we do not repeal it. And clause three of the bill then contains this particular repeal. And then the last amendment uh, is, is to section 16 of the Traditional Coins and Leadership Act. Um, a couple of years ago, the Traditional Coins and Leadership Bill went through a very thorough parliamentary process. And as part of that process, there was an amendment made to section 16.3, paragraph A. This particular section talks about a forum that must be consulted by our traditional leaders when they do the selection part of their councils. Honorable members will know that all these councils, the kingship councils, principal councils, the traditional councils, they have a 60 and a 40% component. The 40% is the elected component, and then the 60% component is the, um, the selected component. And what the section requires is that the traditional leaders, when they do the selection, that they have to consult a forum uh, consisting of members of the, the royal family. But the manner in which that section was amended, which was not realized at the time, um, was to, to uh, have a cross-reference to another forum that is provided for in the Act. But um, when we looked at that uh, um, last year, Honorable Chair members, we realized that there may be an interpretation challenge because that forum that it is cross-referenced to looks like it's applicable to kings and queens and principal traditional leaders, but not necessarily to your senior traditional leaders. So to provide legal certainty, there's an amendment proposed in clause two of the bill um, to amend this particular section 16.3a so that there's clarity on which forum the leaders must consult when they do the selection of their, their council members. And then lastly, uh, Chairperson, uh, these amendments, as Honorable Deputy Melissa Papella mentioned, are really just of a technical nature, and the whole purpose of it is to ensure legal certainty. Um, there are no financial implications or constitutional implications or any of that uh, in these technical amendments. Uh, the bill, as Honorable Members will know, was tabled in Parliament on 29 July this year. And then what I also picked up um, in the past few days, Honorable Chair and Members, is that the tagging of the bill was confirmed as a Section 76 bill. That appeared in the ATC uh, 121 of 19 August 2022. And then last night, I think it's ATC 122, I noticed that the bill was officially referred um, by Parliament to the National House of Traditional Khoisan Leaders for the inputs. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Members, and uh, thank you for the presentation. I'm not sure before I open the uh, lead discussion, uh, Honorable Bapella, if there's anything you want to say. No, no Chairperson, I think, I think let's let's uh, wait for questions yeah. so that we could then clarify as we go along. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Members, it's your turn. I'll take hands as I see them. I see the hand of Honorable Blueprint. Uh, Honorable Players are. Let's follow that uh, order. Uh, Honorable Blueprint. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I take the presentation and the point that it is a uh, technical amendment. I just wanted that uh, chair to make certain that we're not going to do, we're not going to go clause by clause today because I think members just need to uh, consider this presentation first before we, we uh, jump into that. Uh, I, there seems to be a sense of urgency here, but I just wanted to confirm that chairperson that we'll do clause by clause at a later uh, yes, I think we'll do clause by clause later because it's already been referred to the, the, the National House of Traditional Leaders and Khoisan. Uh, I think so, but uh, they will still respond if, if it is not an honorable person. No, 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 thank you very much, Chair. I, I like to ask stupid questions when it comes to legislation because somehow, Chair, as you know, as a former uh, teacher, you would understand that every time we deal with these things, uh, 
they are annual, so we need to be taken to in detail. The first one, Chair, is to let's get an understanding on, on why is it called the traditional affairs general amendment bill. Underlining general, I just want to get an understanding there, Chair. Maybe Dr. Bessel can, can, can bring us to confidence there. And the second one, Chair, uh, I know that the, pre, the bill has been uh, referred to National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders for their inputs. Uh, whether the committee will then wait for that process and, uh, and, 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 uh, and so we can, we can continue uh, uh, with the engagement chair. And uh, the others have been covered by honorable brink chair. I know that uh, in like uh, Cape Metro, Johannesburg, Stellenbosch, Rulini, some areas like that, uh, what would this uh, uh, traditional affairs general amendment bill amount to in areas where that is not applicable, Chair? And uh, lastly, some of the traditional uh, leadership have, have pulled out from Cordialesa. Uh, will it be a a cut across uh, approach to to every uh, a, a traditional leader, whether in in, in inside Contralesa or, or outside Chile. I just want to 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 ask those stupid questions so that I I I, I have somewhere where I, I begin. Uh, no, it's not a stupid questions. These questions. In fact, I, I stopped myself when I was trying to, to be Honorable Bapel and trying to respond to Honorable Brink. So questions. In fact, members of parliament are there to ask questions. I don't see any further hands now. Can I then uh, uh, hand over to you, Honorable Bapel and your team? <laughs> Chairperson, so, so let the official start with the technical aspects of the questions and I'll, I'll follow up with the broader political context. Okay, that's fine. Okay, thank, thank you, Honorable Chair and members. Let, let me go first. Uh, Honorable Member asked a very interesting question about the name of the bill uh, being called the Traditional Affairs General Amendment Bill. Um, the reason for the name is uh, um, the, the bill contains amendments to different pieces of legislation. Uh, it, it contains amendments to the uh, Structures Act. It also contains the repeal of that particular Section 30 to the Structures Amendment Act of 2021. And then it contains uh, an amendment to the Traditional Coins and Leadership Act. They are all related, these particular provisions, to traditional affairs matters or traditional leadership matters. And therefore, it is a, it's called a general amendment bill. Usually when when you do amendments to different pieces of legislation, it's it's just called a, a general amendment bill, um, with with some word or words before the general amendment to specify, you know, whether this is like justice general amendment bill or health general amendment bill. In this case, uh, traditional affairs general amendment bill. Uh, Honourable chair, members are correct. The, the bill, as I said, was referred to the National House by Parliament in terms of I think it's Section Thirty Nine, if I remember correctly, of the TKLA that requires that legislation of this nature must be referred to the National House. Um, in terms of the Traditional Courts and Leadership Act, the National House has a specific time frame within which they must respond. Um, I think it is 60 days, maximum 60 days. And, and what the Act says is that if the National House does not respond within that particular time uh, in writing to the, co to the committee or to Parliament, then it will be assumed that the National House supports the particular legislation. Now, the National House, as honorable members may know, is still being reconstituted. The term of the National House ended uh, end of June, this particular year, 2022. But, um, and while they are still being reconstituted, the, the new National House, the Act also makes provision for the, the House whose term ended on 30 June to continue to, uh, to um, uh, deal with urgent business. 
So anything, for example, like the referral of legislation by Parliament to the National House will still be dealt with by the outgoing members of, of the House. Um, and then the, the other question that I will deal with is, um, Honourable Member referred or asked a question about um, traditional leaders, whether they are members of Contralesa or any other institution. Um, well, the traditional leadership legislation applies to all recognised traditional leaders, irrespective of whether they are members of any other institutions or not. So if they are uh, a, a lot of, even uh, we have even Khoisan uh, persons who are members of Contralesa, but they are not yet recognised. Um, but the legislation applies to all recognised uh, kings, queens, principal traditional leaders, senior traditional leaders, headmen, headwomen, and then once they are recognised, then also it will apply to the senior Khoisan leaders and the branch heads from the Khoisan side. There was a third question just before that one that I couldn't hear, Honourable Chair. Um, I don't know whether my DG or Dian Bapella had, uh, at that moment, I think Honourable Member was breaking up a little bit. So, but but let me ask um, my DG or Dian Bapella, maybe if, if they heard that and can respond to that one. Thank you, Honourable Chair Members. Uh, okay. Honourable uh, Chair, thanks, uh, Dr. Bester, Honourable Chair, and Honourable Members, and uh, the Honourable Dima. I think there's two questions. Uh, one was asked by Honourable Brink, uh, and, and Chairperson, you did speak to that, that uh, uh, there will still be an opportunity to do a gloss by gloss uh, analysis of these three technical amendments uh, that, that are being proposed. Um, and, and indeed, we, 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 we will avail ourselves to uh, appear before the committee for that clause-by-clause uh, uh, clause, uh, analysis. Um, and, and then the third question uh, by Honourable Teza was about... Uh, uh, actually, two more questions from Honourable Teza. One was about uh, uh, districts and metros where there are no traditional leaders. Uh, and whether whatever amendments get effected uh, will have a bearing on those strict districts where they are uh, and not traditional leaders. Um, uh, and, and then, of course, the, the next question was about the implications for traditional leaders who are uh, living uh, contra lesser and, 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 and have decided to opt out of the, the membership of contra lesser, uh, whether they, 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 this will also apply to, to them, despite the fact that they have opted out of, of contra lesser. I'll, I'll talk to the, the one about metros and, and districts um, that we, we generally look at about 31, 32 uh, districts in the country in which the institution of traditional leadership exists. Um, so when we talk about traditional leadership, uh, we refer to those particular districts um, because where there is no traditional leadership, um, the, 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 uh, the provisions that we have in, in these legislations end up not, not applying. So for instance, if we say there must be a forum that gets established and consulted when a traditional council is established or when a principal traditional leadership is come, the council is established, in that particular district, there would not be a recognized traditional leader and therefore there would not be a traditional council. And so whatever we say about forums and so on uh, will also not be uh, applying. In those particular districts, uh, if we say traditional leaders uh, should participate in, 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 in traditional councils, um, and, and Section 81 speaks to their participation in traditional councils, they would not be traditional leaders in those districts. Uh, and therefore, the issues about traditional leaders participating in councils in those districts will not apply. Where it will, may apply later is if we have, for example, in, in the Western Cape, the Honourable Member mentions the Western Cape, where we have Koi and Sun leaders now that become recognised, uh, who were not recognised before. Um, so then you will then have the particular provisions begin to, uh, to apply. Uh, the, the, the last one, probably, uh, Honourable Deputy Minister might, might want to advise on it, which, which relates to, uh, to Contra Lessa and, and other members, uh, traditional leaders that are opting out of, 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 of Contra Lessa membership and the relevance of this, uh, uh, of this, this, this bill uh, 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 amendment to them. Uh, thanks, uh, Honourable Chair. Uh, DM. Uh, thank you, 
<clears throat> no, thank you very much, Chairperson, and thanks for the questions from Honorable Member Staza and Honorable Member Brink. And, and I think uh, uh, the questions from Honorable Brink have been satisfactorily answered. That opportunity will definitely arise at the point when we deal with the 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 the, the bill itself clause by clause. Uh, and today we are, we are just presenting and introducing it uh, so that members can then be aware that the bill is now being referred to parliament. And while still being considered by the National House, it will still come back to the portfolio uh, with whatever the, the, the House will have said and which you might also consider based on their own views and opinions that uh, will then be accompanying the bill at the time. Uh, at the end, the legislative uh, power is yourself as portfolio committee to the National Assembly. Uh, the House can only make comments and then you are at liberty to consider them or not consider them. It depends on how the matters have been presented uh, to the honorable members. And honorable Kaza, uh, the issue of Contra Lesa, Contra Lesa is an extra parliamentary body more like a civil society grouping. Uh, that is the voice uh, of the traditional leaders outside of the institutional establishment. It's, that's why I call it the extra parliamentary. They've got a voice. They are also engaging on issues that may go beyond just the legislative frameworks as a mobilizing organ that says, traditional leaders deserve better, and then they will then be fighting and identifying an agenda from time to time on those particular issues. What we then work with is the establishment of the traditional leadership, where it exists. It's governed by law, uh, the Traditional and Coercion Leadership Act. Whether you are a member of Contralesa or not, that law subscribes to all of you as traditional leaders and the communities that uh, uh, are under those particular traditional leaders. So that is the law, uh, irrespective of, of which organization we belong to. And then and then, then from there, there are houses. There are what we call local houses. There are also uh, 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 provincial houses up to the national house. That is the structure that is governed by, by law. And, uh, and, uh, and, and therefore, that's the body that we respond to directly. But it does not mean if there are any extra parliamentary organization that has a voice and they want to government attention on any matter, we do not listen to them. But the establishment to every person who is a member of who's a, who's a traditional leader and then get all their membership. So there will be people opting out of Contralesa, others joining others. As you also, there was at one point another organization that also had its own mobile. So there will be extra parliamentary or civil society groups that will always punctuate their voice uh, on matters of traditional leaders. Uh, be feeding, then remain sub, being subscribed by everybody who's a traditional leader. So, in the code of conduct uh, of trade is part of the technical amendments, is it, it goes across irrespective of, of which organization we belong to. On the questions, and there are those questions that are members of Contralesa. And, uh, and there are those who belong to other of commissions other than the national college to exist as local groups. However, when it comes to the application of the law, the law is subjected to any amendments and so forth. And I think, uh, 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 therefore, we shouldn't be very much what matters is the governance of the traditional leadership is within the law that has been passed by the is the one that is the principal act 
Sure, no, we're supposed to do. I'm, I'm still busy. Uh, 